iOS gives us built-in support for sending and receiving data from the internet. And if we combine that with codable support, it's possible to convert Swift objects to JSON to send over the internet, then receive back JSON and convert that back to Swift objects. Even better, when our request completes, we can immediately assign that data to properties in our Swift UI views to have them update our user interface immediately. Now, to demonstrate this, we're gonna load some example music data from Apple's iTunes API. This includes lots of information and we'll show the whole thing in a Swift UI list. We're gonna whittle down what it shows to just a handful of information pieces. Firstly, a result will have a track ID plus its name and the album it belongs to, and we'll have a response that will store an array of our results. So we'll start with that code right there. We'll say first we have a response, which is codable, and contains a results array, which is an array of result. And then that result object will also be codable, and will contain a track ID, int, a track name, string, and a collection name, string. Now there's lots more information in that JSON to work with. I'm ignoring most of it. That's the least we need to show something meaningful on the screen this time. We can now write a very simple content view down here to show an array of results. I'll say, at state, private var, results is an array of results. Then in the body property, I'll say we have a list of all our results, the ID being track ID, one item coming in, Inside there will be a VStack with alignment of leading. Then text item.trackName in a font of headline. And then text, uh, text item.collectionName, like so. And obviously that's going to show nothing at all at first, right? Because uh, our results array is empty. Uh, and this is where our networking call comes in. We're going to ask the iTunes API to send us a list of all songs by Taylor Swift and then use a JSON decoder to decode that into an array of our result instances. However, doing this means you gotta meet two important Swift keywords, async and await. Any iPhone capable of running Swift UI can perform billions of operations every second. It is so fast, it completes most work but we even realize it's out of doing the work. It's absurdly fast. On the flip side, however, networking, which is you know downloading or uploading data with the internet and so forth, might take hundreds of milliseconds or perhaps longer. Maybe you're on a train and you've got a really slow connection because you're traveling very quickly. And that might seem fast, like a quarter of a second, but that's extremely slow for a computer that's trying to do a billion other things to do in that same amount of time. And so, rather than enforcing our entire progress, our entire app to stop while this very slow networking happens, Swift gives us the ability to say, this work here, this will take some time. So please wait for this to complete while the rest of the app carries on running as usual. This functionality, this ability to say, uh, leave some code working away in the background while the main app carries on working is called an asynchronous function. Asynchronous function. A synchronous function, not an asynchronous function, a synchronous function is one that runs fully, just straight the way down for returning one value as needed. But an asynchronous function is one that can able to just go to sleep for a while. So it can carry on waiting for some other work to complete. In our case, that means just going to sleep while our networking code happens. So the rest of our app doesn't freeze up while it's trying to download some iTunes API data. To make this easy to understand, we're gonna write it in a few small stages. First, we'll write a basic method stub. So I'll say down here, func load data async, then open and close parens. Now notice this new async keyword is right here. We're telling Swift this function might want to go to sleep in order to complete doing its work. Now, 
we want this thing to be called as soon as our list is shown. But we can't just say on a peer perform load data because that does not know how to handle sleeping functions. It expects its function to be synchronous, to work immediately. SwiftUI provides a different modifier for this called task. It means run a new task with this kind of work inside. And this can cause functions that can go to sleep for a while, which is very, very powerful. All Swift asks of us is we've got to mark these functions with a second keyword, which is a wait. So we're explicitly saying, yes, I acknowledge here a sleep might happen. So let's add a modifier to our list here. We're going to say run a task that awaits a call to load data. Think of this await as being like a call with try. We do a throwing function call. We're saying a sleep might happen here. In the same way we're saying with try, an error might be thrown here. Not it will be thrown. This might not sleep at all. Maybe there's no internet at all right now. Maybe it just cached somehow. It might not sleep at all, but it has the potential to sleep. Now inside this load data method here, we have three steps we want to complete. First, we want to create the URL we want to read from Apple servers. Second, we want to fetch the data from that URL using uh, Swift. And finally, decode that result into a response struct. That's this thing we made here. We'll add these step by step, starting with the URL part. This is going to have an exact format to fit Apple's request. Firstly, it's itunes.apple.com. That's their API domain, followed by a whole series of parameters. You can find the full set of you to search in Google for iTunes search API. Um, in our case, we'll use a search term Taylor Swift and an entity song. So we're saying load songs by Taylor Swift. So inside load data, I'm going to say guard let URL is a URL with a string HTTPS com slash slash iTunes dot Apple dot com slash search question mark our term is uh, Taylor plus Swift ampersand entity equals song find the songs by Taylor Swift if somehow that URL doesn't work and that URL must exactly always works so we've typed it in by hand if it doesn't work we'll do else print invalid URL and then return that's step one, the URL is crafted. Step two is to try and fetch the data from that URL, which is where our sleep might happen. Now, I, I say might a lot here, it might not. iOS will do a little bit of caching for us. It'll remember previous values automatically for us by default. So you try and fetch it again, it'll go, oh, here you go. I'm sure it hasn't changed much and gives you the old version automatically. Um, so if you try and fetch it twice back to back, it'll be sent back immediately. There'll be no sleep. So that doesn't mean there will be a sleep. Regardless, a sleep is possible here. It might sleep. And every time a sleep is possible, we've got to use that await keyword with the code we want to run, saying, yes, I acknowledge this might sleep for a while. Just as importantly, an error might be thrown here too. Maybe the user isn't online right now, for example. Maybe it times out because the internet's extremely slow. And so we've got to use both try to acknowledge errors being thrown and a wait to mark this could be sleeping here at the same time. So down here, I'm going to say, start a do block. Say, let data underscore is try await URL session dot shared dot data from that URL. And there's more code to come. And I'll catch errors here too with print invalid data. That already introduced three important things. So let's just break this down a little bit. Our work is being done by this data from method, which takes a URL and returns a data instance, a data object, capital D, at that URL. This belongs to the URL session class, which you can, if you want to, create and figure a custom thing here, but also a shared instance pre-configured for us with sensible defaults. That's what we're using here. The return value for this thing is a tuple. And this tuple will contain 
the data we want, and also metadata, data about the data, this data describing how the request went. We don't want that data here. We couldn't care less what time it was issued and whether it was cached or not and yada, yada, yada. We just care, give me the actual finished data from that thing. And so we say store data here and discard the response. He'll say, yeah, it succeeded in there. Or yeah, it was this long. I don't care. Give me the data, right? Toss that away. And then we have both try and await at the same time. We use try, then await, not await, then try. Await try is not allowed. Try await is allowed. Honestly, there's no special reason for this. The Swift developers are very honest. They had to pick one of them, and they chose the one that reads naturally. Try await. This reads easier than await try. Anyway, if our download succeeds, if this live code works correctly, then this data constant will be set to whatever data came back from the URL. But if it fails for any reason, boom, it'll jump straight to this catch block saying invalid data and does nothing else. The last part of this method is to convert the data object into a response object using JSON decoder and assign the array inside to our results array. This is exactly what we've used before. So it shouldn't be a surprise at all. We'll say here, if let decoded response is try JSON decoder, uh, dot response, uh, decode, sorry, uh, response.self from that data. If we can decode it somehow, great. Make our results property equal to decoded response dot results. And you can see immediately, boom, it just pops into my canvas preview area straight away. Uh, a list of all Taylor's songs after a tiny, tiny pause. Of course, I'm, I'm on a fast Mac here, it's fine. Um, that's all the code. You can see it's all working here very nicely straight from the live iTunes data. Um, that took not a lot of code given how much it's doing and how well the result you know, works as well, for example. All this only handles downloading data. Later on, this project will look how to adopt a slightly different approach so we can send codable data to the internet, but that's enough for now.